Welcome back to Milan Recording Studios. My name is James Pavel Shakras, and in today's video, I have another comparison between two digital pianos. Both of these are in the price bracket from $1,000 to $2,000. That's the price range in which both of these fall into, and they're not actually as high as $2,000, at least not here in the United States. The Yamaha P515 generally seems to go around for around $1,500 US dollars, and the RD88 typically seems to go around for about $1,200 US dollars. There's about a $300 price discrepancy between the two, but I think that because there's only $300 difference, I think that if somebody was in the market for a digital piano of this price point, they could consider both of these as an option. In my opinion though, one of them is definitely better than the other, and in today's video I'm going to be discussing this, I'm going to be discussing why one's better than the other, and I'm also going to be demonstrating why one of them is better than the other. The first thing I wanted to discuss though here, and actually there's a few things I want to talk about before I get around to playing it. Um, but one of them that I one of these things I wanted to talk about is volume differences between these two digital pianos. First of all, the actual volume difference in person is radically different between these two digital pianos, and I will talk about that more in a minute. But one of them is most noticeably quieter than the other, so that makes analyzing the sound of the two of them and comparing the sound very difficult because one sounds a lot louder than the other. Um, but the other thing is that one of them actually has massive volume discrepancies within itself between sounds. Um, if you go from electric pianos to acoustic pianos, you'll hear volume differences, and even within the acoustic or electric piano category itself, you will hear volume differences between the different patches, which I find very annoying to record with, to say the least. It's very, very frustrating. So I'll talk more about that, and I'll even tell you which digital piano it is that's giving me those problems. And so to keep this comparison a bit fair, and also to demonstrate those sound differences, um, it really doesn't keep the comparison super fair, but it's to demonstrate these sound differences. Typically what I do is when I'm recording two different digital pianos, I do my best, and sometimes I do better than other times, but I always do my best to keep the volumes of the two digital pianos as consistent as possible. So this means either me or my sound guy will be changing the volumes of the digital piano as I play. If an organ sound is louder, the volume will come down to match the sound of the acoustic piano I was playing before, for example. But with these two digital pianos, since one of them has such these massive sound discrepancies that I think are pretty unacceptable for 2020 standards, I wanted to demonstrate that in this video, and so as a result, the only sounds that we will be compensating for and bringing the volume down of will be the organ sounds, because the organ sounds, and that reminds me of the volume of up here is turned down. Um, the organ sounds are louder on both of these digital pianos, and that's a typical standard thing you'll see with digital pianos. The organ sounds will usually be a considerably louder, sometimes a little bit, sometimes a lot louder, than the rest of the sounds. So for both of these, I will be bringing the organ sounds down, but for everything else, because one of them is way more consistent than the other, I'll be leaving them both the same, except for the organs. So. I just wanted to talk about that because I'm going to be recording them. They're going to be recorded the same way, but I'm going to be recording them with a slightly different approach and a different mantra and motto to today's video than usual. So I wanted to discuss that and get that out of the way. Now let's talk about the physical differences between the RD88 and the Yamaha P515, and one of them is the physical difference. First thing you can definitely see is that one of these is a lot more compact than the other, and the more compact one is the RD88. I do have to give Roland some credit here. The RD88 is a very, very compact digital piano, but yet it has none of the same shortcomings that other extremely compact digital pianos have. One of the most famous or perhaps infamous compact digital pianos in the internet today is the Casio's PXS3000, which is, to give Casio credit, incredibly slim. It's very slim front to back and also top to bottom. The RD88 isn't as slim as the PXS3000 from the top of it to the bottom of it, but from front to back there's only about an inch of difference. So if having a very compact and slim digital piano is very important for you, and you're also looking for something that has a decent action, the RD88 is a way to go. I will talk more about the action of this in a bit, though. Another thing that is difference between uh, a difference between these two is the build quality. The Yamaha, I think, overall has the higher build quality, and the RD88 has the lower build quality, but there is a trade-off to that, and I'll talk about that in a second, too. This front plate here of the Yamaha is nice, solid metal. The front plate of the RD88 is plastic. The top panel of the RD8, RD88 is plastic, and the top panel of the Yamaha is also plastic, but it's a thicker plastic and it has a more quality feel. It feels a bit more rattly and thin down here. The side panels of both of these are plastic, 
and they have about the same sort of a feel. The ones over here on the Yamaha are glossy, and they're not down here, so a bit of an aesthetic difference. But overall, the instruments are both ma majorly made out of plastic, but the Yamaha has a heftier underside and a heftier front panel as well compared to the RD88. Now, the trade-off to this is the fact that the P515 is a lot heavier than the RD88, certainly by several pounds, if not more than that. So what that makes the RD88 good for is gigging, and that is kind of its goal. That's why the RD88 came to the market. It's meant to be a compact, slim, simple digital piano you can easily tote around with you to gigs. That's really its main market. And the RD88 definitely does succeed at that. It's extremely light. I can very easily pick it up and move it around if I want to. I myself could just pick it up, put it under one arm, and go to a gig with it. You won't need two people to carry this around with you. So that is another nice thing about the RD88. It's slim, compact, lighter, and easier to transport than the Yamaha P515. However, if one of these got into an accident and fell down a flight of stairs, I'd be willing to bet that the P515 would survive such an accident a little bit better than the RD88. Something else I wanted to talk about with these two pianos that's different is the pedal units. Let me grab those. This is the pedal unit for the Yamaha P515. As you can see, it's a proper pedal unit with an actual physical pedal, and it has a very nice feel. Underneath of it, it is solid metal on the underside, and it also has these big two rubber feet that prevent it from slipping on virtually every surface I've tried putting it on. It's a very solidly built pedal, and it has a very nice feel, and I don't think you'd have any problems with it. Now, the RD2000 is $300 cheaper than the Yamaha P515, but you'd still expect it would come with a somewhat similar damper pedal. After all, it is over $1,000. However, the RD88 only comes with this little foot switch. I do have to give Roland credit. This is probably the best foot switch on the market that I have played. The ones that come with Yamaha, with Casio, and I don't actually think Kawaii has a foot switch like this, but the other ones I've tried aren't as good as this one. This one actually sticks on the floor and stays where you want it to be, which is excellent, but I do think for the money that a actual physical damper pedal would have been a nice touch. But, you know, if you're going to have a foot switch, at least have the best one, and Roland has the best one. The other thing about it is that the cable is incredibly, incredibly long. I can just keep pulling on this and pulling on this, and there's still some slack to it. So the cable for this one is insanely long. I don't even know why it's so long, but it is, which is kind of both a blessing and a curse. It's great because you'll never run out of cable room, but also it can definitely get tangled up amongst your other cables. So let me toss this back down here, and I'll put these back down, and then I'll come back to you and talk about some other things. Another difference between these two instruments is the music desk. The Yamaha P515 comes with a music desk, and I have it right back here. It's this big boy. This is the music desk for the P515, and it sits right up here like so. When the P515 is at an angle, it honestly looks kind of weird, but when the P515 is on a flat surface, it looks a bit more normal. As you can see, it's a very wide music desk, it's a very tall music desk, and with, this, and with the exception of the fact that it's made of acrylic and eventually will get scratches and fade, it is a very great design music desk. This bottom um, lip here is actually solid metal, so it has a very hefty feel. It's a very well-built music desk. It even has little rubber bits over the posts that go into the keyboard to prevent vibrations and wear and tear. So it's a really well thought out music stand. The music stand that comes with the RD88, you may notice I'm not pulling it out here and that's because it doesn't come with a music stand and there are even no places in the back or top to put in a music stand. Once again, the RD88 is geared more towards being used up on stage and typically up on the stage, people generally don't use music. So if you're looking for a instrument that is a good practice at home instrument, for me, I wouldn't choose the RD88. I like the luxury of having a built-in music desk. I know a lot of people are seem to be okay with having having to stick an extra instrument stand behind their digital piano, but me personally, I'd much rather have a built-in music desk than no music desk at all. So I think for home practice, the RD88 is a lot weaker than the P515. The final thing I wanted to talk about here with these two instruments is the user interface before I get on to actually playing them. And once again, one of them is considerably better than the other. Now, one thing both of these have in common is a surprisingly small screen. Again, this is 2020, the world of electronics, and you'd expect things to start having bigger and bigger screens. Stage pianos, though, these days still don't have very large screens. So on both of them, it can sometimes be difficult to read the information on the screen. However, this issue is more, much more prominent with the RD88 than it is with the 
the P515. They have used, um, they've put a lot of thought into how they want to use their limited amount of screen real estate. So scrolling through the menus and everything like that is very open, very empty, and very easy to read, and also very easy to go through. It's very logical up here on the P515. You hit the function button, which personally I think could be called menu, might be a little bit more logical, but the function button nonetheless is right here. You can tap the function button over and over again to scroll through the different categories and use the up and down arrow, the cursor keys to go through and select what you want to do. You can transpose, you can add reverb, you can add chorus effects, all sorts of different things. It's very, very easy and very logical to go through the menu of the P515 and it's extremely user friendly. The RD88, much like other Roland products I've, I've experimented with, such as the RD2000, is much less user-friendly. Um, scrolling through the menu, it's very, very compacted. There's a lot of text on the screen at one time, particularly if you go into the, uh, the key touch menu. There's a massive, massive amount of, of text on the screen that's very, very difficult to read because the screen is so small and they've crammed so much writing on the screen. They have abbreviations for everything. So instead of writing velocity curve, they have velo curve. So it's V-E-L-O-C-R-V. -E so you have to know what all these things mean before looking at them. You don't really see that many abbreviations up here on the P515. Okay, time signature is time sig instead of signature. That's understandable. Record start, record end, record rhythm. It's R-E-C end start rhythm, but we all know what that means. Bluetooth, tuning, keyboard, pedal, sound, MIDI. There's, no, there's hardly any abbreviations in the P515, so it's easier to understand what you're going to be adjusting. Down here, it's just cramped and convoluted and definitely nowhere near as easy to go through the menus. With that out of the way, between the RD88 and the P515, let's finally have a listen to how they sound. I think I might take a slightly different approach, at least at first here. Typically what I do is I'll play the digital pianos and immediately give you my thoughts on them. But I think this time what I might do, and maybe I'll change my mind, I might just decide to tell you what I think anyway, but I think what I'm going to do, at least for the first bit of this video, is just play them and not tell you guys what I think of them, and let me know what you guys think of the sound of these two digital pianos. I always give my feedback of them, so now I think it's your guys' turn to let me know what you guys think the sound differences are between these two digital pianos, and later on in the video I will tell you my thoughts so you can see if you agree with me or disagree. Let's check it out.
As you can likely hear, there is a sound difference between the RD88 and the P515, but like I said, I'm going to wait until a little bit later in the video to tell you guys my thoughts of the sounds of these two digital pianos. What I will talk about though regarding the sounds of these two digital pianos that you guys aren't going to be able to tell is the sound difference between the speakers. I'm using the direct line signal for both of these digital pianos as always in my latest videos, and so as a result, I'm not recording the speakers, so you guys can't tell the difference between the sounds of the speakers. So what I will say here is that the P515 and the RD88, while I've done my very best to keep the line output signal equivalent between these two, there's nothing I can do about the sound of the speakers. I'd have to turn the P515 probably down to about there to make it be equivalent with the RD88. The speakers on the RD88 are, I want to be polite here, um, but they're almost useless, especially in a live gig situation. The idea behind these speakers is, the, is that you could use them to as monitor speakers. So you could have them on and be able to hear yourself in a live situation where it's noisy and you blend into the rest of the musicians. A lot of the times it's hard to hear what you're doing. So in theory, these speakers can help you hear what you're doing yourself. So you can hear yourself better to not outplay the other musicians and play louder than them and annoy everybody. However, the problem is that while Roland markets these speakers and says on their website that they are room filling, they're really not room filling unless you're in a closet. They're very, very small. The speaker grills on top here are very, very tiny and they have larger speaker grills on the bottom, which is another reason why for home practice, well, I guess it would work better for home practice than for live situations because I think you'd have a hard time hearing these speakers in a noisy live situation. Imagine you're at a bar, right? The patrons are getting rowdy. They're all yelling and having a good time. You're up on stage playing with a drummer, playing with a bassist, playing with a guitarist, yourself, maybe a vocalist. It's loud. It's very, very loud. But the RD88 isn't going to be able to punch through that at all. Obviously, you wouldn't be using these speakers to perform, but even to hear for your own benefit to be able to track what you're doing a little bit better, I don't think the RD88 would be very good at that. So while I can understand why Roland has put very small speakers in here, it's to keep it compact, and I do appreciate that. At the same time, it's you're almost, I don't know, almost no speakers might even be better. It'll make the instrument lighter and they're not that useful. Anyway, at least in my opinion. The P515, I have both of these maxed out on volume. The RD88 is at max volume and the P515 is at max volume. The P515, even when playing quiet like that, is easily at least twice, probably four times as loud as the RD88. So it's much, much louder. It has a much more full sound to the speakers and it's much more pleasant to play and listen to. Um, as a kind of a comparison, the... P515, it's about the same volume as a real piano would be. It's certainly an upright piano. When you play it quietly, it almost sounds like you're almost playing a real piano as far as the volume level is concerned. It's about as loud as a real upright piano. And when you play the keys really hard, it has a volume level that almost would rival at least small grand pianos. By comparison, the RD88 sounds like you're listening to a piano on a cell phone through the speakers. That's about, that's the massive sound difference. It's like listening to a real piano versus listening to a recording of a piano through a phone is the volume difference and sound quality difference between these two digital pianos. While I appreciate the effort from Roland to have speakers in an instrument like this to be able to used, to be used as monitor speakers, I am not really sure how effective they will be at being used as monitor speakers. Hopefully you guys get what I'm saying there. But let's move on to some more piano music. What I'm going to do now is play my treble test piece on both of these digital pianos. And then after that, I think I'll give you guys my feedback on the sound differences. So let's do this.
So now let's talk about the sound differences between the RD88 and the P515. Now I do have my preference of one over the other when it comes to the acoustic piano sounds, but I do want to start off with a couple of positive things for the Roland RD88. The first one is that the sound of the piano sound up here in the treble, I really think has been improved over previous RD models. When I reviewed the RD2000 at the time, I was very disappointed with the sound of the treble resonance and the sympathetic resonance of that particular piano. The concert grand sound of that I thought sounded very stuffy and very fake up here. I believe Roland has tweaked this and actually made it sound a little bit better, whether that's because of my video or just because they felt like doing it anyways. I really feel like the sound up here in the high treble has really been improved and honestly sounds a lot better. Let me just play a few treble notes with the pedal held down and let you listen to the sympathetic resonance and that natural echoey sound that's built in here. So as you can hear, the treble resonance of the RD88 is actually pretty respectable, and like I said, it actually sounds pretty good now. Like in the past, the RD2000, I wasn't too amused with it, but the RD88, I don't know, I think Roland's starting to make some improvements with their piano sounds, and I think if they keep doing that, they'll eventually have a very, very nice piano sound. At the moment, while it does sound like a piano to some degree, I don't think it sounds as real and authentic as the acoustic piano up here on the P515. Part of that, I think, is because the touch curve, the touch velocity, is actually a bit too high by default on the RD88. You may have noticed when I was playing Claire de Lune, and even that random little chord progression just now, a couple of the notes came out very loud, and they sounded very brittle. And that's because if you go to the key touch button up here and you look at the velocity curve, which I mentioned earlier, you'll see that it's set to medium. Um, what this does is as you increase the, the, the volume at which you're playing the key, of course, a real acoustic piano will get brighter. And the changing the, the velocity curve will change how much brighter and how louder the piano gets when you play it harder. If you put it very soft, everything is loud. If you put it very hard, everything is pretty quiet and mellow sounding. I think it this digital piano ramps up into that brighter edge tone a bit faster than a real piano would or even the P515 does. What I will do, I said I wouldn't tweak the volumes, but let me just turn them both down a little bit so I can play louder on them and then you will hear the difference of what I'm talking about. I'll play a single chord and maybe a single note and just play it over and over again slowly increasing the volume and you'll hear what I'm talking about here. The RD88 will get much louder and much brighter much quicker than the p515 hopefully that makes sense hopefully my demonstration will prove my point Hopefully that wasn't peaking too badly there, but you can definitely hear a difference. To get the RD88 to be punchy and bright and shrill, I hardly have to hit the keys loud at all. To get the P515 to hit that bright edge and make it be really punchy, I have to hit the keys way, way harder. This is more along the lines of the way a real acoustic piano would be. Now, every acoustic piano is different, and some will get brighter sooner than others. Um, but typically, especially with the high-end contragrand like a real CFX, if you play it gently and mellow mellowly and quietly, it will sound mellow, and as you ramp up, it will slowly start to get brighter. Down here, I think it gets a little bit too bright too quick, and as a result, it doesn't sound quite as authentic. Now, obviously, the big elephant in the room here is that you can change a velocity curve. If you put it on um, heavy, it's a little bit more like the P515, uh, and then it will sound a little bit better and be more consistent. You won't have these notes that'll suddenly pop out and be louder when you don't want them to be.
that's a little bit more like what the p515 does but you could hear there was one chord in there that came out a lot louder than the other so it still isn't perfect if you put it on the extremely heavy or super heavy which is abbreviated spr heavy because the screen is so small and there's so much text on it uh, if you put it on the super heavy setting it's very very heavy it's very accurate um and it's um very difficult to even play loudly at all so i don't think that's the optimal setting somewhere in between might be pretty good let me put my volumes back to maximum now and let's head off to a different sound bank here of these two let's move on to the electric piano um both of these do have a few different variants of acoustic piano the c the uh, yamaha p5 and 5 has the phenomenal busendorfer piano sample which i probably should play now that i mention it i think let's not move on to electric pianos just yet and let me play the phenomenal busendorfer sample of the uh, p5 and 5 here uh, we can choose a different concert grand sound down here too let's choose the mellow concert the busendorfer sample of here is mellow Let's try the Mellow Concert Grand down here and see how they compare. I think you can definitely hear a difference there with these two as well. The melody line of the RD88, while it did actually sing out and project over the chords very nicely, it was brighter and harsher sounding than the melody line of the P515. While I don't want to go as far to say as that the P515 sounds like a real Busendorfer, I do want to say that it has captured the spirit of a real Busendorfer. It has that same mellow, singing, pure tone that a real Busendorfer would have, and it's a very, very good replica of a real Busendorfer sound. It's absolutely a dream to play, and I love playing that piano patch of the P515. Now, another thing you guys might be mentioning in the comments is the fact that because the RD88 is designed to be a stage piano, the piano sounds are brighter by default to be able to punch through the mix, which actually is a very good point, and I just now thought of that because the mellow concert grand is still pretty bright. So that is another aspect of the RD88 that I didn't really take into consideration before, um, but I do think that the piano sounds of the P5 and 5 still are good. Like I mentioned, when you play the CFX Grand and even the Busenover, but specifically the CFX Grand, it still has punch and it can still be extremely loud. Um, the RD88 is just going to be really bright sounding and not be super loud and punchy. This is going to be bright sounding and super loud and still sound good. So I think that's one of the differences between the two. But now I think it's now time to move on to the electric piano category. Let me play the default sound of both of these on the RD88 and the P515, which is a Fender Rhodes type sound. On the, I keep wanting to call it the CP88. The RD88 is called Tyne EP Mark II, and up here on the P515, it's simply called Stage Electric Piano. <laughs>
While on the Roland FP30, I really disliked the Fender Rhodes sound of that instrument, the Fender Rhodes sounds of the RD88 are much better than on that instrument, and honestly, they're actually pretty comparable with the P515. I think the P515 is overall a bit better, but the Rhodes sounds of the RD88 definitely come closer to being competition with this than the FP30 did. Of course, the FP30 is a more affordable instrument, but that's still the previous Roland I've had some experience with in recent times, so I just wanted to make that brief comparison there. The Fender Rhodes sound of the RD88 is actually quite pleasing to listen to, especially through the direct signal. The speakers kind of thin it out and make it sound a bit like uh, compressed and filtered, um, but the actual direct signal is quite pleasing to listen to and has a pretty good sound. I think the low bass could use some improvement. It's a bit kind of, what's the word? It's guttural down here in the low end, whereas it's rich and growly in a different way, in a more rounded, beefy way of the P5 and 5 than down here. So I prefer the sound of the bass of the Rhodes on the P5 and 5, and the treble up here of the P5 and 5 is also pretty nice. It's a bit, um, bit more punchy and, and brittle sounding than of the RD88, but of course different Fender Rhodes had different characteristics, so it's one Fender Rhodes sound will not sound like every single Fender Rhodes ever made. Neither of them really come super close to emulating a Fender Rhodes. I wouldn't prefer to make a recording with one of these than I would a real Fender Rhodes, but for on location and just for general fun playing, they do perfectly fine. Let me try another different sound of the RD88 and compare it against the P515. We'll go to sound 41 here, which is Tyne EP Mark 1. So I'm not sure, but I think you guys may have heard something interesting there. Whenever there's an audio issue in one of my videos or something you guys think is an audio issue, you're always very helpful and you're always willing to point out where you think I can always improve. And I'm sure many of you guys are probably even writing down in the comments, hey, that second sound is peaking. Now, I don't know for a fact that it was peaking there, but earlier in previous video testing and audio testing, I noticed that the second road sound of the RD88 is radically louder and more full sounding and just bigger and louder than the first sound. Here's some side by side comparisons and this is why I didn't want to mess with the volumes because that would have taken this out and made the RD88 seem more normal. The a lot of different digital pianos will have sound volume differences. Even the new SV2 has some volume differences between some of the electric pianos and some of the acoustic pianos and the clavinets and stuff, but it's not that noticeable. When you're recording with it, it's not that big of a deal. But with the RD88, there's massive sound discrepancies in the same group, the same family of sounds, the different Fender Rode sounds have different volume levels than each other. Let me stop ranting about it and just play a few chords. I'll go back to the first one, the Mark II, and then I'll go back to the Mark I and flip back and forth and you'll definitely hear a sound difference. <laughs> So clearly there's a sound difference, and in my opinion, that is not ideal for a modern day instrument. Uh, if this was back in the early 2000s, I'd definitely cut it a lot more slack. But in 2020, you'd think we'd have been able to figure out by now how to get the different sounds of even the same type of instrument to be the same volume. Now, it's pretty common in digital pianos these days to have the organ sounds be a lot louder, which is pretty standard. It's still not perfect, but it's a bit more understandable because when you have a real organ, when you pull out more draw bars, the sound gets louder. So if you have one organ preset that's just four draw bars and you have another organ preset that's emulating all draw bars being pulled out, 
it's going to be louder. It's a bit more understandable. But different Fender Rhodes type sounds, and I've never even seen that before. I've never seen a digital piano where the actual sounds themselves vary within the same category. Let me scroll through here and just play a couple more chords on each different sound and see if there's any more variances in the Fender Rhodes category. Let's check it out. What is happening? They keep getting quieter. As I go through here, they're just getting quieter and quieter and quieter. I swear there's no audio tricks going on here. As I'm going through here, the volume's at max. This volume's at max. As I'm going through here, they keep getting quieter and quieter. Let me flip back to the second one, the Mark I sound. I'll go from the phased EP, sound 51, and then go back to, I think it was 41 or 42, and you'll hear a difference. <laughs> Why? Why is this a thing? This is the issue I was talking about at the beginning of the video. This is why the RD88 is incredibly difficult to record with. Um, it was very, very frustrating when I was setting up the mic levels and balancing them out between the two instruments because I'd play one Fender Rhodes sound and we'd be, oh yeah, it sounds great. Then I'd change to another one and we'd be like, oh wait, there's audio issues. It's peaking like crazy. I'm, I was just driving me nuts. And then I realized after a couple of seconds that there's volume differences between the two sounds. All right, enough ranting about that. I just wanted to get that out of my system and tell you guys about that. That is, I think, one of the biggest flaws with the RD88. Anyways, let's move on to clavinets now. The P5 and 5 has one clavinet sound. The RD88 has like 10 or 15, so I won't go through every single one, but I will scroll through a couple of them on the RD88 and compare the two. <laughs> I know I said it was going to leave that thing with the volume differences in the past of this video, but I can't help but mention it again because it's here again in the clavinet section. The first clav sound is really loud. The two phase clavs, one and two, are not as loud. And then the chorus clav is incredibly loud. It's the same as the first one. So again, we've got the same volume differences. Okay. They're here. The volume differences are here in the clavinet section as well. Uh, I, I don't know. That just frustrates me and annoys me. I think the first clavinet section also is incredibly more loud than the acoustic pianos. What I'm going to do is play a chord on that first clavinet sound and then play the same chord on the acoustic piano sound of the RD88 and then do the same on the P515 and we'll see if there's any differences. Now, because the speakers of the P5 and 5 are louder than the RD88, it's hard for me to tell, but I think that the RD88's clavinet sound, at least that first one, is way louder than the acoustic piano sample, but on the P5 and 5, they're a lot more parallel. There's a lot less volume discrepancy between the two. So again, the RD88's got these crazy volume discrepancies that make it ridiculously hard to record with, and I also would imagine it might make it difficult to even perform live on stage with it if you're changing between sounds and going between different stuff and it's one sound is too loud and the other one's not. Your mixing guy is not going to have a fun day. Let's move on to the organ sounds, and this time I will tweak the volume. Um, on the P5 and 5, I only have to move the volume down about two little notches. There's two. There's a row of printed buttons up here, little dots. I only have to move it down about two dots to get it to be where I want it to be. On the RD88, I have to move it down like a quarter of, like, if you think of a clock face, go around a quarter of that, and that's how much I'm turning down the organs here. So let's try out the organs of the RD88, at least the first one with the first organ of of the P5 and 5 and see how those sound.
So there's a couple of the different organ sounds of the RD88 and the P515. The P515 has some decent organ sounds, but I actually have to say that some of the organ sounds of the RD88 are pretty pleasant to listen to as well. Again, there are no tone wheel organ, but they actually are pretty fun to listen to. The VK organ in particular, that was the first one there, is very nice to listen to. Some of the other drawbar and rotary style organs are a little bit weaker than the other ones, not in terms of volume levels, but in terms of actual quality of sound, at least to me. But many of them are pretty fun to listen to. Let me scroll through a few of them here and play a chord or two on them and we'll see how they sound. There's just a little flavor of some of the different organ sounds of the RD-88, and honestly, most of them sound all right. I could actually imagine myself playing around with those and having a good time with them. So that is one of the things that RD-88 is pretty decent at, is doing organ sounds. Let me scroll through a couple of the organ sounds of the P515 here and just have you guys listen to a couple of the differences between them. The final couple sections of the P5 and 5 and the RD88 would be the string section, the pad section. The RD88 also has a few guitar and bass sounds, probably more than a few, and it also has some synth and brass style sounds. I'll go through a couple of those really quickly. Let's try out the string sound of the uh, RD88 and the P515. Let's see what sound, uh, string sound I want to use down here. We've got slow full strings, string section. Let's just go with the slow full strings and choose the slow strings of the P515 to match it. They don't sound like a real orchestra, but both of them are pretty pleasing to listen to. The RD88 has a pretty big number of different string style pads, and the P515 only has a couple different variants of them. Let me scroll back up to the top here for the RD88. Alright, the pads and choirs, the P515 has a couple of those. Here's my favorite one of the P515, the dark pad, and let's compare it to the soft pad. <laughs> Synth pads aren't really my favorite type of sound, but both of these do have a couple variants. I like the ones up on the P515 more, at least compared to the two I played down here of the RD88. The RD88 also has a couple of guitar sounds, which the oh, I hit the split button by accident. Um, which the P515 also has. Here's a nylon guitar for both of them.
The RD88 has a bunch of different brass and wind sounds as well. There's quite a few of them in here that I could scroll through and play, but this video is getting pretty long, so I think I'll just jump to the synth section. If you like synths and you like synth leads and that type of like electronic music type of sound, the RD88 might be something you might want to consider. It's not really a true synth, but it does have a lot of cool synth sounds in here that are kind of fun to play. This one's very, very loud, so it might peak here, but it's one of my favorite ones I like to play with. It's Distorted Stack, apparently. It's pretty fun. <laughs> I know all my audience doesn't like that type of music, but for those of you who do like those sorts of sounds, the RD88 can do them. That, I think, has been just about everything I wanted to talk about regarding the RD88 versus the P515, with the exception of the action. That is a chief difference between the RD88 and the P125, and it's another reason why the P125 is considerably heavier than the RD88 in terms of weight. The sides, actually, I think the keys themselves of the P515 are made of wood, which gives it a more piano-like feel. The keys of the RD88 are actually plastic, but overall, the keys of the RD88 88, hard to say. Um, the action of the RD88 is pretty decent. For the majority of music you might want to play, the RD88 will do you just fine. If you want to play pop, rock, jazz, blues, light classical, the RD88 will be able to do you pretty well. The, uh, the dynamic response isn't as accurate on the RD88 as it is of the P125. I think it's kind of a combo of the action not being quite as precise and the touch sensitivity being a little bit wonky of the RD88 that's leading to those issues with the acoustic piano sounds where the notes come out a little bit too loud. And overall, the, P1, the RD88 doesn't feel as precise as the P515. When you play chords and when you play notes and when you play fast passages of the P515, you feel locked in and dialed into the action or vice versa. It feels dialed into you. However you want to put it, it feels like you and the P125 are communicating on the same level. With certain types of things that you might play on the RD88, like trills, especially trills between the black notes for some reason, they seem to be extra difficult to do. Um, certain maneuvers like trills and turns of the RD88 seem to be difficult at times. Not every time. Off camera, I was playing a Bach a Fugue, the first one I always play in my videos, and I was doing the trills perfectly fine on both digital pianos. But in other times, when I was just messing around doing trills, I was having a very difficult time with the RD88. That's the thing I've noticed with their PHA4 action. It's just not as precise and not as just not as precision oriented as the NWX action for Yamaha. So while I'm not saying the RD88's PHA4 action is terrible by any means, I'm just saying it's not as good as the P515's action. And between the two, I'd much rather practice on the P515. It feels more like what you'd expect from a real piano, and I think that's a better translation to a real piano than the RD88 would be. I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this video between the RD88 and the P515. Um, there's a lot of differences between the two, and although they are $300 difference in price, I think you get way more than $300 extra value out of the P515. It really is a fantastic musical instrument. The RD88 might be perfect for some people, some people who want a bright, punchy piano sound, who want a light, compact instrument that doesn't have too many sacrifices regarding the action. The RD88 would be a decent instrument for you to use, especially if you're familiar with Roland's a bit convoluted user interface and you're very comfortable with using their instruments, the RD88 might be a good option for you. But the P515 has better speakers, better piano sounds especially, and most of the other sounds are very good as well, and the P515 doesn't have the crazy volume differences that RD88 has either. Like I said, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this review of the RD88 versus the Yamaha P515, and I hope it has helped you guys to make an educated purchasing decision between the two. I just prefer the P515. It's a phenomenal digital piano, and I love playing on it. Every time I get it out of the box and play it, I'm just like, I love this thing so much. It's so good. If you guys did enjoy this video, you might want to go check out my channel if you're new. I've got lots of cool videos of acoustic pianos, digital pianos, organs, harpsichords, and all kinds of other cool instruments that have a keyboard attached to them. So if any of that sounds cool, you might want to go check out my channel. And if you do that, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.